serious disease, but we can't give in to hysteria or fear because that only makes it harder to get people the accurate information they need. We have to be guided by the science. We have to remember the basic facts. First, what we're seeing now is not an outbreak or an epidemic of Ebola in America. We're a nation of more than 300 million people. To date, we've seen three cases of Ebola diagnosed here. All right, folks, does it make me rest much easier? I could tell you that. And joining us now is Dr. Richard Ammerling. He is a uh, author of a great book, uh, Physicians' Declaration of Independence. He's also president-elect of the American Association of Physicians and Surgeons. And he uh, has penned a, a piece at WND.com. If you want to live, ignore the CDC. Welcome, doctor. Thanks. To, thank you, Steve. Great to be here. By the way, I am My now pleasure the president, to have you. Oh. not the president-elect. Okay. So, uh, you know, uh, all right. Well, con uh, hail to the chief and all that. Congratulations. And when you say you're now the president, uh, I, I, I hearken back to the piece we just played from Barack Obama. Um, <laughs> let, me, let, me, let, me, let me ask you this. Um, how messed up is, is, has the CDC been from day one on this Ebola situation? Well, very messed up. When you consider that this outbreak has been raging in Western Africa for many months now, you would think that they would have had some sort of basic plan uh, in place. Instead, they come out with these ridiculous pronouncements trying to reassure everybody, and it betrays a profound ignorance of how devastating this disease is, and it also betrays our total lack of experience with this disease. And the only people that really have been fighting this disease are the Doctors Without Borders guys and the Nigerian and, and the West African Medical Corps, they're the ones who have experience with it. And so for Obama to say that we, are, we don't have an epidemic here, of course we don't have an epidemic, but why should we have any cases of, of Ebola here? I mean, they should have been putting travel restrictions in place uh, for months now, and they still won't do it. Let it's me, quite incredible. The, uh, well, 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 in your piece, uh, you talk about the fact, and I think you quote Michelle Malkin on this particular uh, uh, issue, how the CDC has morphed, how, how uh, then you go on to say it's, it's, it's kind of like uh, uh, NASA, you know, turning to Muslim outreach, as it did at one point. Uh, the CDC no longer is primarily concerned with fighting disease, making sure we don't get disease and keeping Americans safe from disease. They're more concerned about video games and, uh, and, and what we eat and uh, big soft drinks and that kind of stuff. Right, bureaucratic uh, mission creep. Uh, of course, uh, under Obama, this has accelerated because he's, he's converting all of these agencies into agents of fundamental transformation. So they no longer are responsible for their original mission, which is uh, uh, disease control. Uh, it's pretty, pretty scary. I mean, when you think about bu bureaucratic incompetence in general, uh, no one is ever accountable. Here we have three cases of Ebola in the country. No one's going to retire or resign or be fired. No one's going to face any kind of a discipline. And so the incompetence just goes on and on and on. And this sort of thing in the private sector certainly would not be tolerated. Now, you also point out that that being the case, we cannot afford to wait for the government, for the bureaucracy, for the inefficiency of, uh, of the uh, CDC and the rest of them. We have to take our health into our own hands. Uh, airline pilots and, and, and flight attendants should refuse to, to fly uh, you know, to those countries and from those countries, et cetera, correct? That's right. I mean, the, the evidence of, of the last uh, couple of decades in this country has been that if you wait for the government to take care of you, particularly the federal government to take care of you, you're going to end up in bad shape. Uh, look at 9-11. Uh, 9-11 was a bureaucratic meltdown. I mean, there were so many opportunities to catch these guys, but the upper levels of bureaucracy interfered with the agents who were trying to catch uh, bin Laden. Uh, when you look at Katrina, the poor response by FEMA initially, the poor, poor response by the federal government, and all the state and local governments also did not do very well there. So we have to look out for ourselves. We can't be waiting for the CDC to uh, magically save, uh, save the show, save the bacon here. They've already shown that they're behind the eight ball when this uh, 
guys showed up in Dallas. They should have been there in force. They weren't. Now they have someone there who's a, apparently very competent. I think, he, I think he's a Frenchman by the name of Pierre Roland. And I assume that he's from uh, Doctors Without Borders. And he has real experience fighting Ebola. Right, and he immediately, right. As he a... immediately found these issues with the way the nurses were taking off their uh, protective people. Yeah, I mean, that you would think, I mean, as a layman, that would make the most sense to me or the most nonsense seeing uh, skin exposed. Doctor, great to talk to you, sir. Appreciate it. And everybody check out uh, The Physician's Declaration of Independence, a great book. Up next, Senator Chuck Grassley. We recorded it right before we went on air, just before the five airports were named as the only uh, check-in points for people from West Africa. We're coming back. Don't go away.